Uh, Mr. Two Time. U.S. DGC champ. He is an eight-time winner this season. This is his second major this season. I said at Yuli last week, I said, listen, U.S. DGC is a course that is going to crown the person that is throwing the best and is putting the best. There's not much out there. It's literally who's the best at throwing, who's the best at putting, and no one's better than this guy right here. Gannon joining Tour Life once again. How's it going, brother? Good. Thank you for having me on. Appreciate you jumping on here. I know, uh, I know this is maybe not the greatest time slot as all uh, uh, for you, but I appreciate it. We'll get you, we'll get you out of here quick, but I do have some uh, rapid fire questions for you, if you will. Um, the first one is like after a season, this impressive, right? Last year, I, I made the claim that Calvin's season was probably the best season we had ever seen. You have now, I think surpassed that. Uh, I mean, I think you surpassed it before even winning this major, but now by winning this, it's, it's clearly the best season that's probably ever been, ever been had as far as competition achievements, all of that. Um, what, what are the future goals now? Where do you go from here? Honestly, I don't know. Um, I definitely want to get a world championship. That's definitely top of my list probably. Um, but it sounds crazy to say, but maybe 10 wins next year is my goal. Double digits. Um, wow. Yeah. And uh, I only missed the top 10 once this year so far. Hopefully I won't miss it this weekend, obviously. But um, so that can be another goal I can aim for to get top 10 every event. Um, definitely achievable for sure. Maybe even top five with, you know, the way my game's kind of been trending these last couple of months. Uh, if I'm able to keep that up, I'm going to work hard in the off season, kind of get on the grind as soon as I get home after this tournament. So obviously hoping to start the next year pretty hot. I think 10 wins is definitely achievable if I can do that because I finished pretty solid this year. So if I can get a couple more wins early season, I think it's definitely there. So when I watch your game, it's difficult for me to look at and say like, oh, this is like a big hole in his game. You just don't seem like you have any holes. So what are the areas of your game this offseason that you're going to work on and focus on to improve uh, moving forward? Yeah, it's, it's not a ton, obviously, but I think um, obviously some touch shots. I'm not the greatest at them. I'm obviously not bad at them. Uh, you know, I can, I think I played whole one at Winthrop three under. So that requires a lot of touch. It and looks I think like I've you're throwing like 20% power, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. I, I do get that a lot. Um, like, like when you first, when I, the first shot I saw you throw on hole one, I was like, this is going to be a hundred feet short. Like you barely, <laughs> and then it just was pit high. So, um, yeah. is that just like a last year's getting a lot of snap at the end? Yeah. I, I think it's, I think, um, I think my timing is pretty solid and I can get, easy distance. Um, and you know, sometimes it's tough to dial back on. Um, but touch is definitely one of them. Um, I want to improve some of the angles on my forehand shot. Mm. I always want to become very comfortable on, on different angles, forehand, backhand. I'm overall pretty comfortable with every single angle. Now, um, I have no problem going from Heiser flip to Anheuser. Um, so I think if I can dial in a, you know, maybe the type of forehands that you see like big germ throw where he's throwing something pretty like understable to neutral flat kind of getting some drift left on the forehand, a very difficult shot considering it has less spin and it's typically a little more nose up than a backhand. So something like that, it's not used a ton. Obviously I think you can these days make whatever you want work. There's obviously a correct shot for every single hole in my opinion. And that's why that's what, you know, I think becoming uh, one of the best players is it's key to have every shot in the bag. That way you can play the highest percentage shot on holes and it makes the courses way easier. You're not going to throw out as bad out of bounds as much. Um, my forehand got a lot bigger this year and just more consistent. So there's holes that in, in the past I was throwing backhand, I'm throwing forehand now. So, you know, my game has definitely become more well-rounded this season. And uh, those are just a couple of things I'm definitely going to be working on. Will you be working on the Statue of Liberty flick? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, I need at least 500 feet with that. Okay, it's a very, very, very useful throw. If you don't know what it is, you can look it up on YouTube. What's like an um, uncomfortable hole for you? Like you look, you ooh, come to a hole, you come, you come to a hole, and you're like, ah, I don't want to throw this. Yeah, um, I, I'd say, I'd say a hole that requires like 
and I think Macbeth is probably the best in the world at this, especially when he's on. But like a slightly nose up, pretty neutral fairway driver that gets a straight push and a little bit of fade. Um, I'm able to throw slower this hard to get this uh, similar flight or just throw something more over stable and kind of just play Isaac golf where you just kind of play for a 30 footer. But that type of shot with a very flat release point with a pretty neutral disc, slightly nose up. That's any, any hole that is like that. I find pretty difficult. Um, or the other holes I find extremely difficult are some of these holes that Nevin, honestly, um, when you have trees immediately on the left side of the tee, there's no room to start it left and flex it a shot. Um, you know, being a right-handed backhand player, we typically tee from the front left corner of the tee and the disc comes out about where your left shoulder is at. So it's already starting left of your body. So it makes the gaps a lot smaller when you have trees immediately on the left side. So, um, yeah, and any any holes like that definitely get in my head a little bit more and uh, cause me to maybe have a couple shanks. Gotcha. Speaking of shanks, do we have any idea what happened to AB on eleven? I don't know. He, I heard him kind of mumbling about a noise. Uh, there okay. are port there are porta potties back there. In my opinion, you can't really blame that for that bad of a shank. The camera actually doesn't even make it look as bad as it was when you're in person there it's right there man i've never seen him do it that's how bad the shank was i yeah. i was shocked i was completely shocked by that shank um i know he was super gluing his hand all week uh once again not a not an excuse for a shot that bad but it can definitely get in your head if you're feeling some pain or maybe he found a sticky part and maybe like leaked onto his pointer finger or something um you know we've all probably had a shank that bad obviously, but uh, just a bad time to have that bad happen. time. Yeah. 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 I noticed the same thing. It looked like he kind of looked off cause you're right. There's that behind those bushes. There's that big parking lot. And then there's a, they have a porta potty sitting yeah. like 20, 30 yeah. feet from the tee box. So uh, it is what it is, but I agree with you. Like a shank that bad. It's like, I don't think, uh, I mean, unless like you have one of those uh, golfer pranksters, like jumping out of the bushes yeah. with like a, a <laughs> horn, horn. Yeah. like yeah. getting on you. Like that's the only thing that you're like, oh, okay, that, that makes sense. Um, the other thing I want to talk about now is I, I want to talk about hole 17. We, we got it. We got to get a breakdown of hole 17. What, what was happening there? Because you, you missed that putt. It goes OB. You, you lay up, you tap in AB makes his putt. That makes hole 18 a little bit more interesting for you. Yeah, for sure. You know, looking back, probably not the smartest decision. My caddy told me to lay it up. So don't blame him. Uh, uh I, some people may have said that, um, uh, to be completely honest, I don't think there's a great way to play hole 18 for par and being up two is not safe at all. In my opinion, a hole 18. And as you know, being the putter, I am, I feel pretty confident from that range. I actually thought I made the putt. Um, it just kind of stayed up a little bit on me. Um, and once I got that reaction, I saw it settle in bounds. I felt a little, I guess like even guilty for running it, but, uh, like I said, I don't think there's a great way to play hole 18 for par. No one ever really does it. And, I would almost feel more stupid if I can't play whole 18 for par correctly. So in my head, I want to go into 18 with three strokes. It's a 45 footer. I feel pretty comfortable making the putt. Like I was a little surprised. I missed it. To be honest, I wasn't nervous. There were no nerves. Um, so no, there wasn't really anything against me. There was no wind. And so I went into that putt thinking I could make it. Um, like I said, looking back now, probably not the smartest uh, because of the consequences. I, I weighed all the consequences. I knew it. I was willing to accept it. Um, but, you know, how I kind of look at it now that it's over and I have the win, um, I had a mistake in round three on hole three or in round two on hole three. I was about 100 feet away from the basket and I just needed to putt to get up and down for my par. You know, super easy shot. One of the easiest shots in the game, just an up and down layup putt. And I didn't take much time. I shanked the putt threw it in the tree right in front of me, missed my 40 footer for par. And all I could think to myself was if this cost me the win in the entire week, the, all, every round, all I could think about was that one shot that I had an error on. And I was like, if this ends up costing me the tournament, you know, I go in a hole, hole or round four down a stroke. I'm like, I should be tired right now. There's not even a question about that. <laughs> um, so I, I look at that mistake, the same thing as, you know, the putt on 17 It's over, you know, there's nothing I can do about it. So I, I went after, you know, after round two and I made that mistake and I was like, 
you know, it sucks. It's over. Can't do anything about it. Now that the Paul and over, you know, it's, it's over. I got the win. That's all that matters. And, uh, you know, I, I didn't get punished, but it could be, you know, good moving forward to uh, maybe lay that one up. <laughs> did, did a scoob, did a scuba <laughs> ever come into your head? That thing funny. almost I, shot I, I up actually, the, over the hay bells, and you, dude, I, I could, I would, I couldn't believe you ran it. I could not <laughs> believe you ran. Yeah. It. Well, to be honest, I don't know the last time I've laid up two circle two putts in a row, yeah. um, and I, I had to lay my putt up on fourteen. So, uh, yeah, I just wanted some excitement. You know, I just love some excitement. Everyone's like, I mean, if you yeah, make it, me I'm saying the same thing. If you golf, made the so, putt. Everyone, everyone gets mad at me for boring golf. So I'm like, maybe I'll spice it up a little bit. <laughs> but, uh, I like that. You know, I like that. We won't, we won't test it in the future. We're going to just play smart. Generally, I feel like I'm one of the smartest, humbly one of the smartest players on tour when I go about yeah. game planning. Yeah. Um, yeah, you can look at a couple of interviews I did before USTGC, and I was very um, adamant about how specific and intentional my game plan was this week to make it so I wouldn't make big mistakes and others would fall off as long as I played my game and made my made my circle one putts. I didn't even putt good from circle two this week or last week. So, um, you know, I, I kind of went in, into the week knowing that I'm going to be contention of in going in the final round with how my game was feeling. But actually, my game itself wasn't feeling that good. Putting, backhand, forehand, nothing was that good, but because I was making smart decisions and playing my game, my play style, um, being confident, um, it, it turns that course pretty easy. Honestly. Um, I, I think I knew I was going to win. There was a couple points, honestly, that told me that one of them was in round three. I shot a bogey free eight under, and it felt like one of the worst rounds I'd played it. It was just terrible. I just wasn't scoring that well, but I did, I did get enough birdies to shoot eight under par, which is great. I, I went through up. Um, and then, and then during the final round, a B, uh, I, I was just going to say, bring up AB after he hacked my phone. Um, I could see AB getting visibly frustrated during that final round on a couple shots, and I knew I could take advantage of that, stay in, stay in a good spot mentally for myself. And um, when I saw, you know, blood in the water, got to take advantage of it. And I think, uh, you know, being able to start hot on that round, I think I was uh, 400 through five, which is a great start out there, especially having hole three, hole four, hole two is difficult. Hole one can be difficult and hole five scary. So, um, you know, I was, I, I got off to a hot start, got the lead early and I knew then all I got to do is play my game. And um, yeah, after, after how bad I felt like I played in round three and still shot eight under, I knew that wasn't going to happen again. That was about the worst I could shoot. And yeah, like I said, just, uh, that's how my, my games felt this, this year is I, I have gotten a lot of birdies obviously, but it feels like, you know, the birdies from myself kind of just come naturally. And if I can, I guess just outlast people, that's, that's, uh, one of the best ways that I can get the job done. Yeah. I think, I think we saw a big increase in, uh, disc golf from Paul pushing kind of the envelope. And I think you are doing kind of what he used to do about 10 years ago. Or so, because courses are going to have to change, right? They're going to have to make courses Ganon proof. They're going to have to push the limit because if they I'm a course, 200 feet, every hole 200 feet. If, I, if <laughs> I'm a course designer and I hear, I hear the guy that just won the tournament said, yeah, I played terrible and I shot eight under like I'm crying at night. Like that's, that's not what I want to hear. Right. So we gotta, we gotta do something different. Differently. And so I think you're not only going to make these course designers and courses more challenging, but you're also now forcing players to be like, this guy's not really going to like mess up. Like you have to go out and beat him. He's not going to beat himself. So uh, I think, I think you're doing a great job for the game, regardless of what people say out there. Cause people will say whatever. Um, Yuli, did you have anything for Gannon? Kristen's in waiting for us. I know that tonight's crazy, so um, apologize no, for everything being so we, jam-packed. If we Gannon proofed it, then it'd be funny because Macbeth would thrive and Big Germ would thrive. <laughs> 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 and so that would be a funny tournament. Maybe a little alternate. Gannon proof, Paul proof, Gannon proof, Paul proof, back and forth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Dude. But again, we appreciate you jumping on, yeah, man. Thanks, Congratulations. Man. Two-time US 2 gc That's a hard one to win, too. Yeah. Like that that major yeah. is difficult to win two of them. So that that's yeah. a big feat, and I'm sure it's probably not going to be your last one. Congratulations, brother, and good luck at the tour championship. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Thanks for having me on. All right, brother. Take it easy.